All we want is the same as our brothers and sisters in the Department of Education. That's all we're asking for. This will be easy because it's common sense. Once again, I was reminded that common sense isn't so common. This must be the beginning. This looks great right now, but if this is it, we don't win. This must be the beginning. We must be united, we must be loud, and we must be heard, and we must demand the same for these three and four-year-olds as the three and four-year-olds throughout this city and throughout the state, because they deserve nothing less. Keep up the fight, keep up the fight, keep up the fight. God bless you all, and thank you so much. myself as Sean D. Francois the first, proud president of Local 372, DC 37. So I'm going to ask you some questions. What do we need? We need but let me tell you what we need, too. You can tell me that after I'll tell you what we need. We need paycheck and economic equality, correct? Yeah. We need increased pay transparency, correct? Yeah. We need to stop disparity, correct? We need, a, we need a National Standard Act, correct? Yeah. We need a National Pay Leave, correct? Yeah. We need a Paycheck Fairness Act, correct? Yeah. We need to close, close, close the gender gap, correct? Yeah. We need to stop poor quality agenda, correct? Yeah. We need share purchases, correct? Yeah. We need solidarity all across the board, yeah. correct? Yeah. So, when I say, what do we need? You say wage parity. What do we need? What do we want it? What do we need? When do we want it? Now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Is labor in the house? 1707, we in the house? Ask me, are we in the house? My name is Anthony Wells. I'm the president of the Social Service Employees Union of the 371 and ASME International Vice President. Yeah. And we're here with you to say, hear our voice, see our action, meet our demand. We're not asking for respect. We're demanding respect. We're not asking for parity. We're demanding parity. We're not asking for you to treat us and the way you want to be treated, we're demanding it, and your actions today say, we're not going to stop until you do it. Yeah. It's past time to talk. Come to the table and negotiate a fair raise, cut this gap out, pay us for taking care of our most precious resources, these kids, every day. Don't compare us to nobody else. What we do is what nobody else does. We give a damn about our people we came for. These are our kids. This is our family. And we're here to say to whoever it is, the mayor, any other politicians, labor leaders, that we're not going to complain. We ain't going to sit back and just go bah, bah, bah. We're going to come together on days like this and have action and have our voices heard. As long as we stay together, support each other, let no one come between us, stand together as workers, as unions, as people, we will be successful. We're not asking for anything. We're demanding what we deserve. And you either give it to us, or we give it to you. God bless you, and God bless the union. Is he right or wrong? Is Anthony Wills right or wrong? I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next speaker will introduce himself. He's a big shot, and let's welcome Vinny. I am not a big shot.
job for the worker, trust me, just like each one of you. It's DC 1707 in the house. It's the labor movement in the house. We are here. I'm the president of the New York City Central Labor Council that represents almost 300 unions in around this city. 1.3 million unionized workers. And we're standing with each one of you to make sure you know we got your back in this fight. We got your back to do what is right, what should have been done, as my colleagues have said so eloquently up here on the stage, what should have been done years ago. When I heard Mark Hannes Arrow say that for six years we've been doing it. Six years we've been up here fighting for this, for many, many years, for wage parity, to make sure that we have the economic equality which needs to exist in this workplace and why. And let me just make a couple points. Because the solidarity is important, is important that you see up here, but the issue is important too. The work that you all do is so critically important, not only to these beautiful young children that we see here today, but to society as a whole. And it needs to be valued. And anybody who said, anybody who says that we're going to value them in different ways is telling a falsehood, is telling a lie. Because you show me your my, you show me your priorities by showing me how you're valuing people, okay, and how you're supporting the work that good people do. We need to make sure that these CBOs are funded at a level that is going to ensure that you all get the pay equity that you have earned, that you deserve, and that is important for these kids. That is critically important. The second thing is that I would like to just make a point, because it is important as well, is we do a lot in society. We really do. And at the end of the day, we really can be judged as a society about how we protect the most vulnerable people in that society. You are out there each and every day doing what so many great educators are doing throughout the city and the DOE. Long hours, important work. Mom and dad and guardians aren't always around. And you are there helping these kids, you are educating them, you are making sure that they have a better path in front of them because of the work that you do. And we need, as that sign says, to show us the money to make sure that, that the pay that you receive, that it reflects the commitment, that it reflects the professionalism of this, of the work is in 1707. That's really important here. And we need to make sure that City Hall and that the city understand that. And we know that there are good people in and around city government. And let's have a conversation with them about how we retain and attract each one of you who are out there doing literally God's work each and every day and lifting up communities and giving a brighter hope and future for these kids. And we in the New York City Labor Movement will continue to have 1707s back. My brothers from, from AFSCME that are out here today from District Council 37 from CSC who work in education, we've heard from them. We all have your back. The time for talking is over. The time for action is now. Let's make sure we end this wage, this wage disparity and do the right thing for each one of you. And most importantly, do the right thing for these children by supporting you. Thank you, stay together and stay strong. I don't think you gave them a good enough cheer. Another cheer. Now you already saw her. You already heard her. But she has such a big mouth and so many brains. Remember that, Mr. de Blasio. She has a lot of brains. And women have more brains than men. Lately. God forbid for me saying that. I don't know why the hell I said that. But it's true. Is it true? So I want to introduce again the madam. The only one. What's her name? What's her name? Out loud, Tim Magina. Hello, family. Mi gente, como esta? And all of us from the Boogie Down, get them up. It's Queens in the house. It's Brooklyn in the house. 
and you're worth something, and nobody can put a price tag on your value. But the city has, and we're going to take that back. Because we're going to get what you're worth and then some. Today, we're here to fight for wage parity, for unionized child care workers, from head teachers, assistant teachers, cooks, custodians, family workers, and all family in New York City. Forgive me, y'all, because you know me. The loudness. I don't want to get upset with the fire department because they're doing their job, right? They union members too, so we gotta give it, give them some noise back. Your willingness to come here today and fight for wage parity, unionized child care workers from head teachers, assistant teachers, cooks, custodians, and all family workers in New York City will speak volumes across the country, across the nation. In the Republican states, teachers are fighting to increase their wages and have dignity on the job. And they are winning, and we will win too. While we complain about our wages and benefits, across the nation, child care workers are also fighting for better wages. Local 205 and 95, CSA, have historically demonstrated the progressive leadership that is necessary for your occupation to be recognized and respected. You are not glorified babysitters. You are professionals. For too long early childhood, employees have been directed to have the same education and credentials as public teachers in the New York City school system. But yet we're denied similar wages. You were denied the same money. You should not make 40 to 60% less than your brothers and sisters in the DOE. For 40 years you were called babysitters. They insulted you and they never paid you what we were worth. But that will change today. Our time is what? and you're not paid the wages you need to live in New York City. Ask me how I know. My sister is an assistant teacher in the Board of Education as a parent. At first had her children in daycare and she was an assistant in the classroom. So she knows. My niece is here with us today and because of you she's on her way to college in a year because she was a daycare assessor in the Bronx on Palisades Avenue. Simply said, this is discrimination. Discrimination against women and people of color. And heads of households, the time is for the abomination is to end now. We will no longer take it anymore. This is what we look like. Democracy looks like us. This is what we look like. Democracy looks like us. Put them up. As a Boeingwa, I am insulted by the fact that my sisters and brothers, whether we are light or we are dark or we are brown skinned, African American, Guyanese, Puerto Rican, Dominican or Ecuadorian or African, we are family. We deserve the right to be respected and not be second class citizens. We deserve our pay now. Everybody knows you are not babysitters. You are early childhood professionals. You have the right to demand and who are demanding fair wages based on essential jobs you do every day protecting the lives of the young, teaching them the values that they need, teaching them how to tie a shoe while mommy's at work. You are their sole support while mommy and daddy are doing what they need to do to hold the family together. But what about your family? What about the food on your table? Your time is now! Our time is what? But we must take the fight to the parents in our centers, in our neighborhoods.
neighborhoods, in our churches, in our mosques, in our synagogues, in the streets, to our neighborhood bodegas. We got to get there and talk and outrage our community. Enough is enough, Mr. Mayor. Cheer him on, y'all. Cheer him on. Enough is enough. The time for wage parity for unionized child care employees in public centered face daycare and head start centers is now. Our members have suffered long enough. You have suffered long enough. Your worth is there. And it must be recognized now. It must be recognized how much you are worth. And you need to be respected now. And we don't ask for it, we demand it. The fight has begun anew. To my members, I support you. For you building in the city council, support is building there. You see the unions are out here supporting us, our Central Labor Council, our other trade brothers and sisters at 37 CSA, CWA, and I can go on. I will read a statement from Corey Johnson, the Speaker of the New York City Council, to my constituents in all five boroughs. Your child care professionals who devote the utmost energy and time into our city's kids. So let's show them our appreciation by paying you the wages you deserve. Equal pay is a standard for which they have been fighting for for years. And we will not rest until all workers are fairly paid. I, Corey Booker, proudly stand with District Council, Corey Booker, Corey Johnson. Woo! But that's good. He's up in the Senate in Washington. He's going to stand with us too. I, Corey Johnson, probably stand with District Council 1707, Daycare Employees Local 205, Head Start Employees Local 95, and every child care professional in demanding just wages and practices. Give it up for the city speaker. But we must lead this fight to victory. The union will be contacting you. My staff will be calling you about petitions to push wage parity across the town. The union has prepared the petitions. We ask that you speak to your parents, go to your churches, to your mosques, to your synagogue, your homes of worship, to your building, to your tenants, to the tenants association, your neighbors. Ask them to sign this petition and send a message to City Hall that our cause is right and it is fair. We will be holding more demonstrations across the city. Join us again because our time is now and we will not take no for an answer. 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 Our time is what? Our time is what? The city is expanding UPK across the city. But public center based child care must be organized to avoid our people being super exploited. I am asking members to help organize our public center based child care agencies that are not organized. Bring them a union card, let them know that the union will fight for them too. They won't get pushed around. Neither will you. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. to provide the members of Local 205 and 95 and all child care workers fair and equitable wages. They cannot go any longer treating you like second class citizens. No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! No more. When the late great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King spoke to the sanitation workers in Memphis, Tennessee, who were then and are now members of AFSCME. He said on April 3rd, 1968, the day before he murdered, and I quote, 
You are demanding that this city will respect the dignity of labor. So often we overlook the work and the significance of those who are not in professional jobs, of those who are not in the so-called big jobs. But you are, your daycare and head start. And as he said, let me say to you tonight, that whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity and is for building up humanity, it has dignity and it has work. We're all living and working, y'all. Get him up. Our time is what? We're looking forward to the future. We're looking for parity. And our time is what? 17 of 7? Give it up. Brothers and sisters, the city comptroller Scott Stringer is here. He's been a friend and an ally to 1707 for many years. He knows where the money is and he's going to help us. Brothers and sisters, I bring to you the comptroller of New York City, Scott Stringer, my friend. First things first, let's give it up for Kim speaking truth to power. Give it up. I'm here to say two simple things. The first is I want to talk to you as a father of a six-year-old and a five-year-old. These are not my grandchildren. These are my kids. And when I had those kids, I didn't know a whole lot about what it would mean to take care of these very little babies. I didn't know. How would I know? But the day care provider and the workers knew how to watch out for my babies five days a week. You take care of everybody's children. You make sure that nothing happens to them so parents can work, grandparents can survive, guardians can be okay. You have always watched out for the babies of New York City and I thank you for that. But here's the thing. This city talks a good game. During budget time they talk a good game. But they're not really willing to invest in the people who take care of our babies, our children. And that has to end today. There's nothing more important. We see nationally what's happening when children get ripped apart. And then everybody stands up and are outraged about what we're saying. Well, I want to talk about what's happening here in New York City with our children. We have got to create an opportunity for people who take care of the kids to be able to take care of their own kids. And then the question is, how do we do it? And now I want to talk to you as controller. You come up with a dollar amount that you need, and I am telling you today that if this administration would simply look within the agencies for efficiencies and look at ways to hold some revenue, then we can pay you a livable wage, no question asked. And how do I know that? I do the books in this town. I've seen the numbers. And I have to say one other thing. We should only get you to where you think you should be we have got to begin with District Council 1707, a conversation, how we expand what you do, how we hire more people and give more people the opportunity to take care of our children. When you are involved with the caring of kids, more mothers can be in the workforce. More people of color have equality in child care and daycare. Let's stop talking the talk and let's stop walking the walk, because that's what this is all about. 
So I want Kim to know, and 1707 to know, I'm going to do the numbers, but I'm going to work with you. I'm going to march with you. We're going to protest with you. We're going to do it for our kids, my kids, your kids, and the kids we're never going to know, but they're important to the future of our city. Keep this fight up. There's nothing more important. Thank you. Coming in, let's give them a cheer. Oh, I can't hear you. All right, I want to introduce two city council people that are very much on the ball. They stand up for real liberal causes. Let's welcome, and they will announce themselves. Helen. What do we want? Harmony. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Harmony. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Harmony. When do we want it? Now. I want to thank our DC 1707 Executive Director, Kim Medina, for leading us here today. She is leading the fight for pay parity, for equity, and she is leading it like no one before. Let's hear it for Kim! We are joined by so many labor leaders here today. We have Vinny Alvarez from the Central Labor Council. Mark Canizero from CSA. Do we have CSA in the house? Jacques T. Francois, president of Local 372, Local 372 in the house. Anthony Wells of DC 37, 37 in the house. Charles Jenkins of TWU, Local 100, TWU in the house. I'm council member Ben Kalos. I'm a labor lawyer and I'm here to represent you. DC 1707 elected me in 2013. We had your volunteers running our campaign offices day and night. You got me here and now I am here for you. I'm co-chair of the Progressive Caucus with 20 members of the city council and we stand with you. And I'm here with one of my bosses Chloe Pashman, who's a director of a DC 1707 site in the Bronx, and she's a constituent, and she told me this was an important issue, and that's another reason why we're here. But we're all here from so many unions, because when you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. The people united can never be defeated. I want to wake up in a city where you can raise a family. We have a child care crisis in New York City. As a father with a four and a half month year old at home, I can tell you firsthand, that's why we fought for universal pre-K and 3K and why the Progressive Caucus is still fighting for universal child care. But when we won universal pre-K, something went wrong. Some pre-K teachers got paid more than others, and that ain't right. And everyone has the same training and certification. And the promise of universal pre-K still hasn't happened on the Upper East Side. And it's because our providers can't keep people. Once you hire them, they get their training and their certification, they leave for higher pay. And that's wrong. And so that is why we are here today to fight to make sure that our public center based and child care workers all get the same pay for the same day's work. What do we want? Family. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Family. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Family. When do we want it? Now. Thank you.
working and getting the same pay, being able to bring home the same amount of money as anyone else who takes care of their family. You look at pay across New York City and we are not doing right by women. We are not doing right by women of color in particular. And it's friggin' disgraceful. If we want women to participate in society, to have the same jobs, to be able to support their families, why do we make it so difficult for women to work? We have to take down all those barriers. We have to take down all those hurdles and challenges. I'm glad the mayor's announcing today parental leave for teachers and everyone in our schools. That's great. But where is he with all of us? Where is he? This has been a no-brainer issue for six years, six years too long. And as the sign says, show us the money. We teach our children to read, solve math, experiment in science, and we deserve equal pay. We do more for less, that's disgraceful. Stop doing more for less, stop it. We do more for more, and that's what we're gonna continue to fight for. I am so proud to be standing here with your leaders, Kim in particular, but also, of course, 371, 372, 1707, it's time for me to finish. Thank you all so much, stay strong! The next speaker I ask to introduce him. First of all, I live in this district, so I want a discount on all parking right now. But let me get serious. There are very few people that have guts. There are very few people that have guts and principles. And there are very few people who have guts and principles and loving for all people. And I want you to understand that this man stands tall against anybody. Did you hear me? Anybody. I can't hear you. Anybody. He is taking on battle after battle after battle. He's stepping out of his own city council with all the guts in the world, all the brains in the world. I want you to give him a cheer. Jumani Williams! 17! 17! 17! Equal work, equal pay! Equal work, equal pay, equal work, equal pay, equal work, equal pay. What's up, unions? How you doing? You look like New York City, and you look like America. I'm very proud to be here. I'm sad that we have to be here. I want to thank all the unions that are here. They were shouted out already, but I got to give a special one to 1707 that's been with me from the beginning, and it's one of the few that are with me right now as we're moving on up. Someone told me that separate but equal was unequal. But maybe that's only if you are not watching over children. Because what I've been seeing here is a disres disgrace to everything that I am told we are supposed to believe in. And if you are doing equal work and not getting equal pay, I feel like this administration is telling the people who are doing the work that they are not as important as other folks or that the children that they are serving are not as important as the children that other people serve. And that ain't right. This administration in particular came in discussing a tale of two cities 
and it seems that they are pushing the narrative of a tale of two cities even further. No one can give me an explanation of why the workers who I'm in front of right now are not getting paid to do the same damn work that other workers are doing at the same level. If you cannot explain it and you have the power to change it, you are accountable and you are culpable of discriminating against a group of people. We're not going to stand for that any longer. I love this sound like that because it reminds me of Fannie Lou Hamer who said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. He said, I'm tired of feeding someone else's child and I cannot feed my own. But I'll tell you something. We are going to win this fight and I'm going to stick with you whether it's on the city or on the state. All of the people behind me are ready to fight. All of the people in front of me are ready to fight. And when we stand together, we win the most basic of humanity, being paid equal pay for equal work. I want you to touch somebody right now. Touch them. Tell them we're going to win this fight. We're in this together till the end. Repeat after me. Ah. I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe that. I believe that we can. I begin to rock and I say, I believe that we can win. 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 It's your turn now, Mayor. Peace. What's your money? Very good. Was he very good? Was he very good? I want to introduce a friend of mine. He's also a city council person. I remember when he was trying every other year, every other day, trying to get elected. He was a very liberal, radical person that fought for workers. Oh, we are recognizing people that fight for workers, yes or no? Yes. So, I also want to wish him, and all of you to wish him, a very happy birthday to Eugenis Rodriguez. Happy birthday! Come on, let's go. Politicians come to 
union rallies, including the mayor. I've heard leaders say, I have the back of labor. I support labor. But let me tell you something. You can't come to a rally or to show support to labor and only offer 50% of support or 75% of support. You must offer 100% support. You cannot claim to build the most fairest city in America if you do not treat our educators in a fair and just way. In addition to the inequity and injustice that you're experiencing, this is an issue that has a destabilizing effect on communities. Because these classes, when there are vacancies, and why are there vacancies? It's hard to support your family when they don't pay you with sufficient resources. Or when another system will take you and hire you and offer you more money. So how can you claim it's universal or it's for everybody when so many people are left out of the table? This is an issue that affects workers, families, women, and our communities. And Mr. Mayor, you cannot tell me that in a budget of over $89 billion, billions that have grown under your watch, we don't have the money to fix this injustice. And in addition to today, because I'm sure they hear us loud and clear, we need this turnout and the crowd and energy at the hearing that I am chairing with Council Member Levin on June 27th in the City Council. We are having a hearing on pay parity for our educators. Because we're not going to stop. We're only going to turn up the volume until we get equal pay for equal work. Equal pay for equal work. Equal pay for equal work in solidarity. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Councilman Rory Lanceman from Queens. Anyone from Queens here? You know, of all the horrible things that are happening in our country right now, the one thing that has galvanized all Americans, both sides of the aisle, of all political persuasions, has made almost everyone a member of the resistance, is the treatment of children at our border by our government in Washington. Because all of us, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, north, south, east, west, we all understand the value and the importance of children. And that is the business that you are in. And we need to respect the work that you do for our children, for our kids. And the way that we show our respect is by giving you a fair salary, a fair wage, an opportunity to provide for your families as you are providing for our families. So I just want you to know from my little corner in Queens that we've got your back, that your issue is important to us, that you deserve the same pay and the same salary and the same respect that other people get for taking care of our kids, and we are going to fight for you, and we are going to fight with you. Thank you very much. The next speaker, and we, uh, we're moving towards about 25 minutes more, and that's it, because we all have to get back to work, but we're going to take our pockets we're going to take our pockets and make sure they get full, get full with money. Am I right or wrong?
We didn't come here to just yell. We came here to get the money. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Get the money. Get the money. Get the money. Uh, you're yelling too much. All right. Let me give you my friend Charles Jenkins for a one-minute speech. Let's welcome Charles Jenkins from CBT.
Thank you guys. Tish apologizes for not being here today, but asked me to just read a quick statement on her behalf. Underpaying community-based childcare workers compared to their DOE counterparts is unjust and only serves to hurt the educators and the children they work with. When this pay disparity exists, systematic inequality persists, leaving the city's poorest preschoolers with the lowest paid teachers and the cycle of underperforming communities with no end in sight. Every teacher deserves an equal and fair wage, and I continue to stand with them and urging Mayor de Blasio to end this reality. So one more time so they can hear you at City Hall. 17! 17! Thank you. All right. We only have 15 minutes to go. I'm on overtime already, for Pete's sake. All right. Let's introduce Pat Kane and she'll tell you who she is from night. You know, he's a little big. I can't push him around. I was threatened to 
and he gave me one look, so I ran the other way. I want to introduce a friend of mine, Sonia Ivany, who I know, I think it's 88 years I know her. She claims to be only 53, but I know her for 88 years. She can't lie to me. She's head of LACLA, was head of LACLA, is returning to LACLA. Let's give her a hand, LACLA, Sonia Ivany. And ACS. I'm not just trying to join the people, but 
they are the one should be responsible for us. 